the dart falls out, but it's already delivered its payload of tranquilizer. Thankfully, Little Pinkfoot's family is at hand. But this could still go badly wrong. Sylvia or her family could charge and force the team to withdraw. Sylvia could fall awkwardly. Her huge bulk could restrict her ability to breathe. She could suffocate. Worse still, she could fall on Little Pinkfoot and crush her. At first, things are looking good. But then Sylvia puts out a distress call. Little Pinkfoot responds. She runs back to Sylvia and stands right underneath her three-ton bulk. For her, being right under Mum is the safest place in the world. David and the team try to flush Little Pinkfoot out with their vehicles. But she just won't budge. Eventually, David does the unthinkable. He risks his own life to save Little Pinkfoot's. If Sylvia goes down now, she could easily crush them both. but even Little Pinkfoot weighs 100 kilos. Moving her takes force. The rest of the herd are wild with distress. They could charge at any moment. <laughs> Little Pinkfoot panics. team have got to get her back to her sister's side. Thankfully, baby elephants instinctively follow large objects, so David uses his vehicle to lead her towards her family. Once she's safe, the team can start their work. The abscess is huge. It's drained and cleaned thoroughly. The team work as fast as they can to reduce the stress to Sylvia and the rest of the herd. A vet from the Kenyan Wildlife Service gives her a massive dose of antibiotics. Thousands of elephants get shot every year. Most die slowly and painfully. Finally, the vet gives Sylvia an antidote to the tranquilizer to bring her round. Thirsty elephants often race into pools. But the matriarch knows that her family must not rush in. This pool is stagnant, and the elephants have a trick that deals with that. Sediment settles to the bottom, and the cleaner, fresher water lies on the surface. They skim it carefully from the top. Then, as gently as elephants can, they move forward slowly, trying not to disturb the stagnant layers.
But precious water like this draws in herds from far and wide. In the exuberance of a greeting, all their careful work is undone. When bulls are forced together by the need for water, tempers can flare. Frank and the team are fitting Edison's tracking collar. So this is a new type of collar that we're trialling. Um, it's a little bit easier to put on than the other ones. And instead of having a big lead weight at the bottom, it's uh, all the brains are down in the weight as well. It may look big, but for an elephant, it's just like wearing a watch. The collar's on. Now it's time to wake Edison up. So we're just going to jump back in the car. That was after 16 minutes, the antelope's just gone in, so let's wait and see how long it takes him to, to wake up, and hopefully he does. The antidote counteracts the effects of the tranquilizer. All going to plan, Edison should be back on his feet within a couple of minutes. But he's not. This is when everything stops and everything gets quiet. And the second hand seems to go around the watch a bit slower. And you wait for him to, to get up. The first sign we'll be looking for is, is his ear twitching. Normally, just a couple of minutes, isn't it? He's been down too long, and they're worried. Vet Matthew Mutinda administers another shot of antidote. Seen this before, George? Uh, yeah. I don't like this at all. This took its time. Oh, thank God. Oh, that's a big relief. He's paying a lot of attention to it. He's sniffing it, thinking, what the hell is this thing? Why am I wearing a necklace suddenly? I've only done about 10 of them, but every elephant that I have been involved in collaring leaves you with a special attachment to that elephant. So when, you, when you're following them on the, on the tracking system, you, you know what they're like, and you, know, you, you feel a you feel a connection. Yeah, and certainly, when you see them, you're, you're very uh, yeah, it's like seeing an old friend five, again. Five, so I'll always have a feeling for Edison. If they become separated, they could easily drown.
Oh my Andy. god, one is gone. The mothers try in vain, but they can't contain all three. As they save one, another washes away. Oh god. They're still going and the baby's gone. Soon all three are being swept downstream fast through the crocodile infested waters. The current's even too much for the mothers. They have to let their babies go. David can't see how they can possibly survive. Oh, oh man, this is no good. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. You can hear the poor females. Okay, Apple. No, 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 right, right. Uh, all the big females are running. Oh, God. Okay, one baby is out. Man, the other one is here. The other one is here. Wow. There are two babies actually here. Wow, they're really tough. Come on, big females, come in. Oh, please don't move. Oh, they're coming down. The females are coming down. I hope they will save them because they will get tired. And if a crop grabs them, that's it. The poor mothers just don't know what to do. They have no way of lifting them out. And David can't even help. Oh, come on, females, get in and save the babies. The riverbank is sheer and the babies are weak and terrified. joyful to see all of them again coming back together. He needs to sedate the elephant so that the snare can be safely removed. So guys, we are ready. We go help the elephant. This is good. I'm happy now the vet's here. Fred works alongside a spotter plane to locate the injured bull. wants to dart it quickly to stop it from suffering. Okay, so let's go to them. So Fred managed to fire the dart and the elephant's taken yeah. off through the trees, so we're just gonna, gonna try and locate it. Choppers on the ground. Oh my goodness. Jeez. That's really shocking. 
Kuna bosi ya black ingine iko huko na nafunguliwa pia hii. On his side, the bull's breathing is labored. We have to move fast to remove the snare. Oh, they go big. The poachers have simply used winch cable from a truck. A snare like this is cheap to make. It could have caught any of Weaver's family. The reason that this animal has endured this unimaginable pain is for this. It's tusks. It's just, it defies belief how cruel people can be to, to animals and how senseless this whole thing is that you can cause so much suffering, so much pain. For, for an ornament, simply for an ornament. It's a poor animal. He's treated with a special clay that'll help heal the wound. What do you think, Fred? You think it's? You think it'll survive? Ah, you can see the guy's body condition is good. He was walking, and also it was getting to another bad level, but it's still okay, it will survive. You see the bone is not involved. Okay. Intact. The bone is intact. Okay. So when the bone is intact, the soft tissue can easily... Really repair. ...recover, yeah. Finally, the wound is treated with an antibiotic spray. All that remains is to wake him up. My word. Hey, fella. Okay, move back.